Today we come to the second of our Christmas symbols, and that is of the Advent wreath, a lovely symbol which decorates our homes, uh, perhaps our living rooms, hall doors. We see them, we see them everywhere in public places and so on. And you know the symbol well that it's got those four candles that we light one after another each week of Advent that passes by. And actually, going back to the origin, at least the modern origin of the Advent wreath, I think it helps us to understand something that is so rich in its symbolism. The origin goes back to a Protestant pastor in Germany in the 19th century, who was a pioneer, he was obviously a pretty apostolic man. And he was working with the poor. His name was Johann Heinrich Wichern. And during Advent, the children at a mission school that he had founded would ask him daily if Christmas had arrived. And so he, in 1839, he, he built the very first modern ad- Advent wreath, which is built on an old cartwheel, which he covered with these, uh, these candles, 20 small red candles and four large white candles. And so a small candle was lit each weekday. And then on the Sundays, one of the large white candles was lit. So the children could see uh, the, 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 the candles lit up one after another, tracing around the four weeks, essentially, of Advent. And we can, we can almost see them, these children approaching this, this very pious man, and ask him, is it Christmas yet? Are we there yet? It's so typical of children. That inability just to to sustain their their expectation of the coming of Christmas, both for the treats and the feasts and the presents, but also for the coming of the child Jesus. That tremendous sense of expectation is something very precious, in fact. Expectation, even the word is kind of interesting, expectare. It means ex out and spectare, to look, the Latin, to look out, looking out for something. Reminds me, even that word reminds me of, of Christmas Eve when I was a child. I remember very vividly looking out the window to see, maybe we all did, see if I could see Santa's sled passing over. And you're literally ex spectare, looking out the window. This sun looking out or waiting for something wonderful, of course, can be can be kind of torture, and 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 little kids, of course, find it kind of torture the 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 um, the waiting for for the coming of of Santa, the waiting for the coming of Christmas, and this is something that we were we're encouraged by the Advent wreath and not, and by the Advent liturgy to foment in ourselves. It's good this sense of expectation. This looking out, which we, of course, we use to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. Like anything, in fact, so many things, so many very good things that we we have to wait for. We have to expect them. A meal, especially a large festive meal like a Christmas dinner. Marriage, engagement period is this period of expectation. And of course, the, the very first thing it does, I think, is increases our longing, our appreciation for that thing that we are expecting. The feast, the wedding, the marriage, um, the gift, whatever it might be. And it's good psychology, I suppose, and, and God's psychology. Do not preempt these wonderful things, because if we preempt them, if we, if we, if we kind of uh, jump the gun, well, then the thing isn't, isn't the delight that w- it would have been if we'd allowed that period of expectation. And this period of expectation is not just the, we say, the natural excitement at the coming of Christ or, or the gifts that we receive. It goes even further than that. As the expectation or longing for your and my transformation that we would somehow be changed it's such a typical thing at christmas when you think about it very often people delight in just a renewal of a sense of their childhood 
and renewal of the innocence that they had when they were a child. That's, that's in some way a transformation, because we do want that. We do, we, 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 St. Paul talks about the old man, this kind of old and cynical old man that we do not want to become, and, and rather we want the new man. And that is the transformation, very, very like the child that we once were, without all the, the burden of our evil tendencies and habits and so on. So this is also something that we we long for, the transformation that comes when Christ comes into our world, and also into, more importantly in a way, into your heart and my heart. The transformation that only he can bring about. It's a transformation that nothing else really can be can bring about. A simple resolution or something. No, it requires much more than that. It's really deep transformation. And so this is also something that we are we are longing for. The world is groaning, St. Paul says, in expectation of the coming of the Messiah, the, of the children of God. And this is reflected, of course, in the frequent calls to conversion, which the Advent liturgy addresses to us, often quoting the prophets, and especially John the Baptist, of course, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That repenting sometimes has a, has a bad press, as if it's something very Old Testament or something very grim. But that repenting is rather be renewed. Prepare yourself to be renewed by the coming of Christ, something that you actually long for. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.